Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Bango Magazine. Good to be back for the second semester. And on the show today, we're going to start with men's basketball. Fadre Ansari, the coach of the Bengals. Fadre is bringing along Lavelle Smith, his outstanding senior guard from Buffalo and McKinley High. And then Kevin Clifford joins us for women's basketball, and Kevin is bringing Kayla McLean, a junior from New Rochelle, New York. And then we're going to finish the show with swimming and diving and Nick Stone, the head coach of the Bengals. And Nick is bringing along Shannon Coyne, the outstanding diver from West Seneca. We've got the Tim Hortons Athlete of the Week and Matt Schaefer's here with Bengal Update. So we got a big show. Stay with us. We'll be right back and talking men's basketball. Well, welcome back, everybody. We're joined now by men's basketball and the head coach of the Bengals, Fadre Ansari, joins us, along with his outstanding senior guard, Lavelle Smith, uh, out of McKinley. And welcome, gentlemen. Um, coach, it's been a while since we had you on. Uh, we're past the midway point, getting ready for that home stretch. Why don't you give us a little assessment from a coach's perspective on the team? Well, we... Um we're fighting. Uh, it's a very, very <laughs> tough, tough conference. I could take that many ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm very optimistic uh, in that even though we're a little past halfway, uh, I don't think we've peaked out it yet, mm. not even near. Wow. Uh, but we, I feel we can get uh, better, and it really comes down to execution and consistency okay. um, from night to night. Um, and that has a lot to do with the, the competitiveness of our, our conference. Absolutely. And some teams have different styles, and when you have such a short turnaround, especially when you got back-to-back -back games, it, it makes it um, um, not only physically challenged in terms of the rest, but uh, uh, as much as physical, I think, is even more mentally, yeah. you know, because yeah. the teams are different, the styles are different, sure. the coaches know each other, and, um, you know, usually have one practice to prepare for two games. That's right. And um, so the second game sometimes um, gets a little lost. Certainly last week, I thought we played really well against Geneseo as far as sharing the ball and moving then the next night it was almost like the opposite at, um, in at Brockport. Brockport. Yeah. Uh, you agree with that assessment Lavelle? Yeah. I mean you're out on the court all the time. Uh, the, there's there's more to come from this team? Yeah it's a lot more. Um, we just gotta get ourselves mentally prepared for every game coming out strong starting the game strong. And start, yep. You know, yep. It's interesting because <coughs> excuse me you talked off the uh, off the air about you believe the talent is there, so that's not, it's the, it's the mental approach that you're not fighting, but you're working with with this team. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, as, as Lavelle mentioned, coming out ready to play from the beginning. Okay. You know, understanding that it's, um, it's a battle, I kind of use a boxing analogy. As soon as you uh, touch gloves, and then it's on at that point. Right. If you tend to kind of coast the first few rounds, you find yourself trying to catch up at the end and then you you know you might not get the decision mm -hmm. you know so you have to establish you know in boxes they be first with the jab be first mm -hmm. so we have to learn to come out and be first right from the beginning we've done that a few times and it's been successful and the other times we didn't a few of them we were able to come back right and, uh, from being down and, and and push it through but better teams and harder teams and as the season go on it's going to be more difficult to do that right, so right. Um, it's just important for us to to come out and know um, our role and responsibilities execution is is is, is key okay. and I, that's the area i think we um, um, need the most improvement and i think we are capable of doing that well this guy next year has had a great season another great season led the team in scoring last year is leading the team in scoring this year at 20 points uh, and and 55 percent from the field which really got me thinking, uh, second on the team in rebounding. Uh, this, is, this is it for you, your senior year. As you look back on it, Lavelle, uh, d d has everything kind of gone the way you thought it, or has it gone a little bit better than you, you thought it would? It gone a lot, a lot better. <laughs> Coming into like, this school, I never like, thought I'd score like 1,000 points. I, yeah. did, I didn't do it in high school, so I was, it wasn't like a thing coming in here, like, oh, I'm going to score 1,000 or whatever. But it, it changed a lot. I'm really focused on like trying to get the team together. Yep. You know, trying to step up as a captain. Like I'm kind of there, but still a lot more I got to do. So, right. trying to step up and uh, I just want to win. 
So am I to believe he wasn't really a big scorer in, in high school and now he's a thousand point scorer at Buffalo State, the 22nd player ever to do that? Well, he was a decent scorer. He, decent scorer. He got an MVP at the uh, state championship. Okay. A super athlete, always quick. So that, that was there from the beginning. Gotcha. Uh, but he has improved every year in different aspects of the game. And I still, even for the season out there, some things we're still working on. Um, he wasn't much of a jump shooter the first couple of years. Mm. And now his percentage is up because he's found, you know, what I've been talking to him about, the mid-range. And that wasn't easy. You know, he was, he'll tell you, his shot was mostly driving to the basket, sure. fast break. Right, right. Kind of almost had even a knuckleball when he first came in. But now his, his, his mid-range is deadly, his jump, turnaround jump shot. And that with his slashing and his jumping ability makes it really yeah. hard for him. Yeah, it's fun to watch. To no, no question yeah. about it. And again, the 20, there's been a lot of great players through the history of Buffalo State men's basketball. And you are one of the... 1,000 point score. So congratulations to to you on that. Dang as it. as we move down to the end of the season, now the, the real heart of the season, what I call the heart of the season, nine mm -hmm. games left, all conference games. And man, you look at these standings, and and this thing is anybody's game. What do you think, Lavelle? When you, when you look at the standings and you played them all now, where do you assess this team? It's tough. I mean, I, I feel like we can still make it like at least top three. Yeah. By the end of the season, okay, and get it together. Okay. But it's tough because every night we got to come out and play. Like, every team is good. This might have been, like, the most competitive season out of all wow. four years. So. And you had mentioned something off air about the lesser teams giving the better teams a good fight. And then I was mentioning the losses that you had to Brockport and Oswego, mm -hmm. which are the top two teams right now, by one point each. Yeah. So how do you, I mean, as you look down the road here now, how, uh, what are you... What are you focusing in on with, the, with these games? Well, trying to get the players to understand there's very uh, little margin for error. Um, hmm. So we, like Brockport, we had been terrible from the free throw line, and we shot really well there, now rebounding, but yet we, we, didn't, we didn't share the ball and we um, had turnovers. Okay. So which we did you know, very well the night before. Um, so we have to have games where all of those components have to be in place. You know, you can't, right. you know, you might be able to get away with one or two, but, you know, significantly you can't just um, turn the ball over. You have to be able to share and play good uh, teamwork and, you know, defense. So, um, you know, having, there's no nights off. And as right. you mentioned, the the teams that doesn't have uh, good winning records and struggling, uh, may looking outside of the uh, playoff uh, window, you cannot take any team in Suniac for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a mistake. So again, we talk about the mental preparation. So if you look at a team, oh, we think we got it, then you will struggle. You right. know, then that, then if you got back-to-back -back games, you played hard that game, struggling with a team that you thought you automatically beat. Now that right. makes it harder for the next day, which is probably gonna be a tougher opponent. Wow. I, I want to get back to, we have about 30 seconds left, but a, a neat story you told us off the air about your 1,000 points. It happened at Potsdam, uh, and it was a bit of a struggle for you, as you had said, and mom and dad and family were there. But then something came in the mail. Uh, what happened yeah, I there? I thought it was a class act. Sure. Uh, a Coach Smith from uh, Potsdam um, uh, sent us the, the net. He said it was time for them to change anyway, and he just thought about oh. it. Um, so uh, we really appreciate that. So yeah. we'll... Add that along once we give them the uh, thousand point ball at the end That's of the season. That's a fantastic story. Good for them, good for us, and Lavelle, congratulations. Thank you. We're going to take another break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more basketball. Women's basketball joins us. Stay with us. Hello everyone and welcome to Bangle Update. I'm Matthew Schaefer with a recap of news, scores, and a look at upcoming events surrounding Buffalo State Athletics. For the second consecutive week, Buffalo State's Natasha Steinle was named the ECAC West Women's Hockey Rookie of the Week after helping the Bengals collect three wins, including a two-game conference sweep of William Smith over the weekend. Steinle scored twice in Saturday's 5-2 victory and fouled it with another tally in Sunday's 2-1 win. The criminal justice major has scored six goals in her last six games. With the 3-0 week, Buffalo State has now won five straight and improved to 10-4-1 overall. The Bengals head to Cortland to take on the Red Dragons this Friday and Saturday in a conference season series at Alumni Arena. Both games are set to face off at 2 p.m. Buffalo State's men's hockey team remained in the top 10 of both national polls this week. The Bengals, who are 11-3-1 overall, 
stayed at number 9 in the D3Hockey.com poll and number 10 in the USCHO.com rankings. Both marks are tied for the highest received in program history. The Bengals return to the ice after a two-week break to take on Lebanon Valley College in a season series this Friday and Saturday in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Friday's game will get underway at 7 p.m., while Saturdays will have a 5 p.m. faceoff. Fans can watch both games live on buffalostateathletics.com. Men's basketball had two players recently reach an impressive career milestone as Lavelle Smith and Nico McLean became the 22nd and 23rd players in Buffalo State history to score 1,000 career points. Smith was first to the feet with a 17-point showing and a win over Potsdam back on January 6th. McLean reached the plateau with a 12-point for performance at Brockport this past Saturday. Congratulations on the accomplishments to both players who are in their senior seasons with the program. Both men's and women's basketball teams will be at home this weekend hosting Suniac foes Oneonta and New Paltz. Friday's doubleheader against the Red Dragons will tip off at 5.30 p.m. while Saturday's matchup against the Hawks will begin at 2. Again, just like hockey, fans can watch all four games live on buffalostateathletics.com. Alyssa Graymont shattered the school record in the 1650 free as Buffalo State closed out its home schedule Saturday with a dual meet against Oswego. Graymont touched first in the mile, posting a time of 1823.62, more than 40 seconds faster than her nearest competitor and shaving more than 10 seconds off the Buffalo State record. Both men's and women's swimming and diving will be back in the pool this Saturday with a dual meet at Brockport starting at 1 p.m. That's it for Bengal Update, and I'm Matthew Schaefer. Let's send it back to Tom Kohler in the studio. Well, thanks, Matt, for the Bengal update, and welcome back, everybody. We're joined now by women's basketball. Kevin Clifford, the head coach of the Bengals, joins us, along with uh, Kayla McLean, uh, the outstanding junior from New Rochelle, New York. Bring a smile to her face. Uh, coach, it's been a little bit since we had you on. We're coming down to the home stretch. Uh, give me your assessment of the season so far, basically the halfway point. Well, thanks for having us on the You're show. You're welcome. Um, I think the team is improving. Uh, obviously, we've had some up and downs with the injuries and things like that. So, but the team is really fighting, really competing. Um, we're just trying to put it all together for 40 minutes. Uh, we had a nice win against Broadport on yeah. Tuesday. Uh, come from behind, and then Saturday at Broadport, we couldn't finish the deal. We had chances to win. Right. So, I uh, think the team is improving, and we are hoping to get three more players back this weekend. <laughs> so that will help uh, put a full roster on. Our, you know, on it's our funny team. you say it's improving, and, and I laugh because it is, and yet. You don't have any players. I mean, let's be honest. It's, you're, you, you were playing with uh, seven student athletes out there the last couple of games. Uh, and, and these aren't just like hamstrings. I mean, you were telling me off the air some freakish injuries, right? including one in warm ups? Yeah, we had a foot injury, <laughs> Abaja Adams. Uh, she was warming up and she landed on her foot. Wow. Uh, we've had uh, a couple concussions and two ACL injuries. And two ACLs. Uh, and with players that play, you know, pretty good minutes. So How does the coaching then reflect seven you look down your bench and you have five starters and then you can only put two in you let, I mean wh how does that change the coaching philosophy game time for you our coaching staff has been doing a good job in terms of rotating players in we've been doing kind of like two in two out keeping everybody fresh okay uh, we haven't pressed as much as we like because of the uh, the depth and we're worried about foul trouble and things like that uh, in practice uh, the play coaches have been after practice as well we do have a male practice player which helps there us you out go. Um, I'm available, by the way. I have a bad <laughs> knee, but I'm available. And we've been doing more skill work and more shooting and okay. things like that. A lot of like three on O and four on O. So it's hard to simulate game action. Yeah. Uh, but we've been showing in practice and things like that. So we're adjusting well. The team's really coming uh, close together. Uh, no one's complaining about playing time right now because <laughs> <They can't. laughs> um, Taylor Graham had 44 minutes the other day. Wow. Taylor uh, Kayla's averaging over 30, That's 35 right. minutes a game probably. So uh, there's a lot of minutes. Um, so we just have to maximize that and, and also watch it. Uh, yep. The next nine games. Absolutely. Well, Kayla McLean, uh, 30, 31 minutes you're averaging, 11 points. Why don't you tell, assess your season personally? How, how are things going for you? Um, I'm playing pretty well this season since I do have a lot of more, like a lot more time than last year. It's a lot more time to like to work and get my stats up and help my team out and everything. Yeah, absolutely. And and but how do the injuries affect you personally when you're on the court? Is it difficult for you to get comfortable because there's only seven or is it maybe easier because there's only seven and you know you're going to be out there well it's kind of both because because of the injuries like um a lot of people are playing out of position yeah so i'm normally a shooting guard but sometimes i have to play a forward okay but i'm actually good at a forward like on in certain situations sure. so like sometimes it's good 
Well, she brings up a great point. That that changes the whole coaching philosophy too. I mean, where you're normally looking at a two or a one, now now that two is playing a four, and yeah. holy cow, how do you how do you manage that during during the game? It's just well, have to practice, do what they have to do. And practice have to know all the positions, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and now we've gone where we've been able to play big mm -hmm. with uh, Mariah and Priscilla, and then we've also been able to play small with Kayla at the four, right. uh, even Kayla at the five at times. Uh, so and we press more. So it's all dependent on the situational. Uh, and I think they're learning each other now with the chemistry, and we do a lot of breakdown stuff, so they're learning where Kayla likes the ball. I think she's improved a lot. She is a leader. She's always in the gym. I walk in the gym, she's always in there. Um, probably <laughs> gym rat. Much, yeah, probably too much. Sometimes I have to tell her to go home and rest. Um, and she's improved since her freshman year. She averaged one point a game as a walk-on. Mm -hmm. uh, last year she averaged about five or six points a game, and now she's averaging 11 points a game. So her roles change each year, and now she's a leader. People are looking up to her. Do you sure. like that leadership role? Yeah. 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 She's soft-spoken, but probably leads by action on the court, I would say. Yes, lead by example. She's right. being more vocal this year, but she's leading by example. Yeah. Uh, and, and she's very versatile. She's a very skilled player, one of the most skilled players I coached. I love lefties. Uh, she needs to believe in herself. She needs to have confidence. You know, we want her taking the last shot of the game. We want her taking the last shot of the quarter. Wow. Um, and, and, you know, that might be a little pressure, but I think she's up to it now, especially what as a What a compliment. Junior. Great responsibility, too. Nine games left as we move in through the regular season, all conference games, obviously. Uh, your thought process here in these last nine games as you start getting a couple players back, what, what's the goal through these nine games now? One game at a time. Yeah. Uh, preparing for this weekend, obviously, but one game at a time, and then we go from there. Uh, having more people will help just in terms of morale and just being able to have someone in case of foul trouble and if someone needs a, a rest. But the seven players have been really, I mean, competing, battling. Uh, it's hard. You're playing, you know, 40 minutes, 35 minutes, uh, so, and then also practice. So yeah. we just have to monitor that. But one game at a time, we have a good chance to make the playoffs, and we will if we uh, just keep preparing and keep competing. Um, and we have home games. We've got to take advantage of being That's a right. home court advantage. Well, I was going to ask you, last question, uh, the, the two or three keys going down the road to get, get into the playoffs for the Bengals. Defense, taking mm. care of the ball. We're having 21 turnovers, which is uh, uh, more than we want. I think 14 and 16 is usually a good goal. So uh, I think so, uh, taking care of the basketball. And then obviously we've been shooting the ball better, yeah. uh, just making some shots. So the, the other day the game was 50-46. Um, so we need to score a little more points, right. you know, making layups and things like that. Finishing, I think. But mental toughness and leadership are the things we've been talking about Very a lot. Good. So obviously defense, taking care of the ball and layups. Uh, but then the, the not the X's and O's, the, right. the mental toughness and the, um, the leadership factor, right. which is Kayla and there Taylor. You go. Well, let's get some bodies back. Let's get some healthy bodies back and take a run at the last nine games. Guys, thanks very much for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks. We're going to take a quick break, and we come back. We're going to go in the pool and talk a little swimming and diving. Stay with us. Well, congratulations are going out to this week's Athlete of the Week, and it's Alyssa Graymont from Women's Swimming and Diving, uh, the political science major from California. Uh, shattered the Buffalo State record in the 1653 as the Bengals closed out uh, their home meet. Schedule with a dual meet against Oswego. Graymont touched first in the mile, posting a time of 1823.662, excuse me, and that's more than 40 seconds faster than her nearest competitor and shaving more than 10 seconds off the school record. So congratulations to Alyssa Graymont, this week's Tim Hortons Athlete of the Week. And how about that? We have swimming and diving joining us for our last segment today. And Nick Stone, the head coach of the Bengals, along with Shannon Coyne. And welcome. Uh, coach, we're getting near the end yep. to the big, the big ending, mm -hmm. and that's the conference meet. I'd like to get your progress report on both teams. Yeah, both teams are actually starting to put together the training that we did during December and training trip down in Florida um, and starting to show off kind of their fitness and their speed. Um, this past weekend against Oswego was a really good indication, a lot of uh, in-season best times. Yes. And um, the men's meet was very close where last year we Correct. weren't very close at no, all. I noticed so that. Um, it was a really good meet on both sides. Um, the women are starting to come around and start to start to see their races come together. So I'm excited as we go into the last two meets. You know, it's interesting. You, you mentioned Florida and it's fun, fun mm -hmm. trip, right, Shannon? It's yeah. fun trip. 
And yet there's a lot of work to do down there. Mm -hmm. What is what is trying to be accomplished by going down to Florida and swimming and diving down there? It's it's kind of more of like a mental break from the pool that Very we're good. in at the time. Um, we get to train long course, so um, not a lot of the swimmers have access to long course pools. Um, so training 50 meters is a great aerobic work base. Mm. It's hard, yeah. um, and I like doing that as well. Um, and then getting out in the sun and having 80 degree weather for sure. six days is definitely a, a plus. Are the pools inside or outside? Cal outdoors. Outdoors, mm -hmm. Cal like California. I was about to say that fifth, the long, the long course mm -hmm. where you're used to basically stopping or turning after 25, now it's, now it's 50. Yeah. And that's got to be quite a mental adjustment for them. Do you notice that when they're down there? The first couple of practices long course are always <laughs> rough. Um, I bet. Yeah. So like, especially because I'm not familiar with intervals um, for them in long course because it changes. Correct. Um, so the, uh, it's a, definitely a mental game. The first right. couple of I'm like, oh, I don't know how they're doing. And then, but by the end of the week, they're doing great and doing some really good work and their intervals start to drop and wow. stuff like that. Well, that's so. great. Great insight. Shannon, uh, an outstanding diver. And we were talking off air that diving wasn't always your background. Uh, <laughs> in fact, you have, you've been diving for basically two and a half, three years. Tell everybody how you got into diving and what you were doing before that. Um, I originally started as a competitive gymnast and I started when I was four years old and wow. I continued all the way through high school. Um, my school unfortunately didn't have a gymnastics team available to me. So I did diving as an extracurricular planning on going to college for gymnastics, but instead ended up at Buffalo State for diving. How about, is that common? Okay, so they don't have gymnastics, so I'll do diving and prep for maybe gymnastics at college. Do, gym, do gymnasts and divers, are, do they equate? Do we see that a lot? Um, usually what happens is a gymnast will get injured oh. mid-season or during their high school career, and they switch over to diving because it's less pressure on like, your ankles, back, wrists. So yeah. So the, the, does the floor exercise? What helps most in gymnastics when you become a diver? Is it the floor exercise? Or, I mean, is there one particular um, exercise that you can think of? Or not specifically? I would say the spatial awareness is definitely key. Hmm. Proprioception is a lot easier when you've been doing, you know, flipping around for so long. Right. It's a lot you're easier. You're up to here transfer. and you kind of know where the floor yeah. is. So now you're up here and you know where the pool is. Yeah. Where the water is. And yet, you're you're a one meter person. Yeah. You're not a three meter person. I noticed that when I was doing my homework and I thought, wow, that's interesting. So, but you're just getting into it. But why weren't you a three meter diver? Um, I was when I was a freshman and then I started kind of trying harder dives. And I didn't really like it because it's definitely higher. And when you're at the top of the board looking down, you can see the bottom of the pool. So yes. it seems a lot higher than it is. Right. And I just kind of had a bunch of mental blocks up there. So I'm getting back into it now. So how does one, how does, I'm sorry, Nick, we're, we're, we're. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> monopolizing <laughs> the conversation here. But this is fascinating. So how, what, what made you say, I'm, I've got to do this, I'm going to do this? How did you get over that fear? Um, it's my senior year and I definitely have good teammates backing me up on Great. the pool deck. So that definitely helps a lot. Okay. And there. how has your diving been? How, as you as you think about the season, give us an evaluation of how you you've been doing. Um, I think I've been doing very well this season. Great. I've been very pleased with how I've been performing in the pool and outside. So. And coach agrees. Mm -hmm. uh, in what aspect? Uh, just just the, her form or her intensity? Uh, where? I've, more so her confidence um, coming in, getting back up on three meter was huge. Um, for her to kind of overcome those blocks and have a full six dive list right. um, to be more competitive at dual meets and help us out points wise. Point, sure. um, so it's it's been awesome to see Shannon go from where she was last year, even having struggles on the one meter um, on certain dives, and now she's crushing those dives and getting the Fabulous. list better. So. Fabulous. Your last two weeks is probably a little different than somebody in the pool. How, how do you look at these last two weeks? Um, the last two weeks are pretty much just getting extra repetitions in of your mm -hmm. dives and trying to fine tune what you can and fixing those little habits that aren't the best. Right. Well, the conference meet again at uh, the Flickinger Center downtown mm -hmm. at ECC, but before that, Brockport and then Geneseo. So I wish you both the best of luck along with the rest of the Bengals. Thanks for Thank being on the show. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Bengal Magazine. Thanks to everybody who was on the show and everybody here in Instructional Resources. We'll see you again in two weeks for more. Bengal Magazine.